to the rock, sing to the tree, sing to the firefly, lighten up the sky, sing, sing to the sea. Hello, I'm Mary Whelan, and this is The Song, a show that features songwriters and their original songs. And today, I am very pleased to present Frank Chagru. Thank you, Mary. It's a steamy night in Paris, a couple's lost in their embrace, in a corner of a sweltering cafe. We're all suddenly embarrassed As she slaps him across the face And storms off down the route of the pain I'm helpless with my book For I can't touch but only look up And wonder if she's coming back this way Take me there Let me walk right through the pages take me there into that world take me where i can play a part on the stage i got changes to make won't somebody take me there well foggy tarmac haloed light a couple's cupped inside the night and he looks at her from the shadow of his brim he said you know that you must go it's best for both of us you know she boards the plane but won't look back at him i'm nervous in my seat where i can look but i can't speak to tell her she is making a mistake Let me walk right through the screen, yo. Take me there to that world. Mm-hmm. Take me where I can play a part of the scene. I got these changes to make. Won't somebody take me there? Someone's turned the lights down low I'm tangled up in the fire's glow Chasing all these shadows underground In hot pursuit, I hit the stairs Up in the hall and there's no one there I'm in a room and the doors close all around Tangled up in my sheets where I can't wake and I can't sleep I need to find my way back down Take me there Let me get back to the dream Take me there To that world Take me where I can play a part in the scene I've got changes to make Won't somebody take me I got these changes to make, won't somebody take me there? That was Take Me There. That's on my album Edge, which was released in uh, 2013. In fact, everything I'm playing here is going to be from that record. Here's something really different. You can almost call this the title song, but it needs a little bit of a setup. So this is a song about um, the irony of uh, a long span of my life. Uh, I was a Cold War kid, like everybody else. We grew to hate communism and the Red Menace and all that stuff. And then 40 years later or so, I find myself in Russia with my wife, adopting two kids. Irony meets the Iron Curtain. It's called Edge of the End. (laughs) 
Khrushchev's at the UN, he's banging his shoe. His face is red as a flag, we will bury you. Back in the day, we hated each other's guts. Righteous Americans, evil souls. There's a picture of me with my Uncle Ed. Wearing a new sweatshirt and on the front it said, Moscow University. Hey, pretty funny stuff back then. When we were living on the edge of the head. You may remember the phrase, it was all the rage, I'd rather be dead than red. Well, that October when we nearly had to choose, missiles on the doorstep, game of win or lose. Teacher said on Thursday there'll be a test in math, kid yelled from the back and everybody laughed. What if there is no Thursday? Hey, pretty funny stuff back then. We're living on the edge of the end. Oh, 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 oh. Living on the edge of the end. Then one day the whole world changed. Broken countries got new names. Everything that we thought we feared will it up and disappeared. When the Iron Curtain fell. We lost something else as well, not just our enemy, but our identity. Settled in the back seat in for a ride, watching the Russian countryside. Little gray towns that we're passing through. Look at the squares where they still with the tanks and the statues. We're on a mission to the Dead Ski Dome. Arms around these children, gonna take them home. Nobody should live this way, hey, it's never funny when You live on the edge of the earth oh, 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 oh. Mm, When you live and live and live on the edge Edge of the end. Now. <laughs> this is a tune that is written from the perspective of another imaginary person. And I think the story kind of tells itself. It's called Counting My Blessings. Should have seen the moon late last night Falling through the skylight What a treasure to behold Station filling up with gold I watch it from my midship bed Shadows dancing round my head Taken in the mystery light Show it's all for me Cause this is where I spend my nights not so bad, it's warm and dry Though I live out in the open Before you go and pity me It's a life that set me free My fortune's faded but not broken It's a study in black and white All bathed in Monday's light That used to be me down there Half living and unaware Just a phrase to my routine Living someone else's dream Well, here comes the rough and tumble Platform begins to rumble Just the 7.34 
You'd think the world was about to end the way they walk like the condemned. The train opens up its doors. Turn the light down low. Let the last train go. I'll ride the rails of my dreams till dawn. I'm on sight on the scene. Nestled in the mezzanine Counting my blessings till they're all but gone This life, it's changed the way I see The movie that's in front of me Inside the light mm-hmm. A farewell sun in the west window Shines on those with a place to go And I wish them all A sweet good night Turn the light down low Let the last train go I'll ride the rails of my dreams Till dawn I'm a sight on the scene, hold up in the mezzanine, counting my blessings till they're all put gone. Frank, those songs were really nice. Thank I really, you so much. I really enjoyed them. Now, you, it was a nice day for a ride from Framingham. We came all the way from Framingham. Beautiful day for a ride. Yeah. Fall, everything's happening. Yeah, it's out really there. beautiful. Nice. Yeah, nice warm day. Yeah. And we won't have many, too many of those. No. <laughs> Until the spring, I no. imagine. Yeah. Now, um, the songs that you just did and the ones you're going to be doing after we talk um, are all from. Your newest CD called Edge. That that baby right there. And that's from 2013. That's right. That that came out. Yep. Now I want to know about more about the CD, but I also want to know about your first album oh, that yes. was in 1986. In the Maybe Pleistocene can, age. Yeah. 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 Woolly <laughs> mammoths ran free, if you recall. <laughs> Back then. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that was on vinyl. Yeah, that was on vinyl. And that was vinyl. recorded at. Um, Baker Street Studios in Watertown, Mass, on two-inch tape and, you know, the technology of the time. Very, well, I wouldn't say very different experience, but a different feel for that record um, and a different kind of a vibe putting it together. And uh, back then it was more having friends participate and, uh, and uh, you know, give it your best shot. And this was more professionally done and, uh, you know, getting pros on board and all that stuff. So it was nice to have both experiences. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I still have vi- some of those copies left. Uh-huh. That's wow. a little painful to look at the picture on the back. <laughs> Moi. <laughs> <laughs> so where do you think your songwriting has gone from 1986 to more recently? I would say in 1986, I was more of a folky. I had kind of come out of the coffee house tradition uh, in New Jersey. And 86 was uh, shortly after I moved up to Massachusetts. Um, and so I kind of came out of the pure folk environment and did mostly finger picking, in fact, on that record. Um, I think I only have one finger picking song on the new one. Um, so you can hear it in those songs that they're kind of rooted in the the chord structures and sensibilities of folk music. And um, over time, I've gotten away from that. I play more percussively. I generally play with a pick. And I think my style is acoustic still, Mm -hmm. certainly, but not not particularly folkish. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. So um, it's God. Can any of us say how we got from 1986 to here? I'm not really sure. So I'm guessing. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, before the show, we were talking about how you, you skipped right over cassettes. You never had anything out right. on a cassette. Yeah, yeah. yeah, vinyl to CD. And by the way, uh, that in 1986 was sort of the last year of vinyl. Well, mm-hmm. notwithstanding its resurgence now, but that was pretty much the last time vinyl was what you bought when you went to a record store. So there's a lot of things that changed. There aren't too many record stores. <laughs> um, and it changed to CDs right after that. So... Um, Hopefully, I'm not killing CDs by putting one out. I'm just <laughs> saying, you know, sorry. <laughs> now, I want to uh, quote from an article here that was written by Ed Simkis. Oh, yeah. And um, this was back in uh, June, on June 9th, 2013, that mm-hmm. he said this. And this is, it's uh, quoting you. Here's my take on songwriting. Good songs are some combination of stories, messages, and paintings. Mm -hmm. They have to share at least two of those. And the ones um, that are really good songs always have paintings. Mm -hmm. They draw something up for you, and they make the listener do a little bit of work in conjuring up the movie. That's a really good quote. <laughs> I, I kind of like it myself. Yeah. I hadn't heard it in a while. So a good example of that is the last song I played, Counting My Blessings. Mm-hmm. So that's a, most of all, I would say, a painting. It paints a picture of the guy in the railroad station who's obviously homeless and, and, and having that reality while the rest of the ro- world goes on about him. So um, it's, there's a lot of um, sort of sketching in the, the details of that. I would say that's the main thing there. Um, it's, it's a story a little bit It doesn't say much about um, how he got to be there but it does reference that he used to be in that world now he's in this world um, and I don't think there's too much of a message other than to count your blessings but I think so what's left to the listener is to kind of piece this thing together and, and get a sense of, of uh, you, you know what, what it's like to be inside this guy's head mm-hmm. um, so I think that's a song that does those things. Not all of them that I have do that well, but if I go and listen to other people's music, and particularly the ones I like, they almost always seem to fit that kind of model that I described there and had completely forgotten about. <laughs> I, I know someone who is a songwriter, but she is also a visual artist, and right. she does painting, and she would sometimes say at critiques or whatever, don't just tell me, show me. Right, right. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's good. And uh, so that sounds. Well, yeah, like the, the thing same that I mentioned when I when I entered that piece is that it's from the perspective of someone else. It's not something hmm. that I find very easy to do. And there are mm-hmm. artists that I really respect that do that a lot. Like Mark Knopfler, for example, does that. Mm-hmm. Um, he can just be in in the from the point of reference of a completely different character that's nothing like him. Um, and and I found out. Uh, a while back that he used to be a newspaper reporter. So, uh-huh. you know, his kind of delving into characters and all that probably informed all of that. Um, so I think it's great to bring these other skills into it. It's, it's, songwriting to me is a very, very difficult thing to do well. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, the more skills you can bring to the party, the better, uh-huh. I would say. Now, um, have you ever done any co-writing? Of songs? No, but I'm interested in that, oh. and uh, I, I have read a lot about people's experience co-writing. Mm-hmm. I, I, in a way, I'm a perfect candidate for it because I have lots and lots of music, melody, and chords, mm-hmm. and uh, and and even entire songs with a bridge and, and whatnot, and devoid of lyrics. Oh. And uh, I, I probably, as we speak, I must have ten of those. Mm-hmm. Very frustrating, you know. Something about my approach isn't working, obviously. So I would love to um, get together with a lyricist or somebody mm-hmm. who's maybe the reverse, uh, maybe struggles with music but not with words, and, and to put something together. I, I don't know how that would work, but um, I'd love to try. Well, that's something. That, yeah. This is a good place there to be go. saying you'd like to try because a lot there? of songwriters, yeah. will, and right. lyricists, would be watching Call this show. Me. <laughs> You lyricists out there. 
Um, it, well, wow. Now, what um, advice might you have for younger songwriters or people or older people who are just starting to write songs too? It does not necessarily just young people. Who, Boy, who I don't know songs. if I'm in a position to give advice. Um, well, here, this isn't advice, but this is a little more info on how I look at what songwriting is, or good songwriting anyway. Mm -hmm. And that is, is, assuming you're not just interested in being a hit maker, in that case, advice is go to Nashville and do whatever they do down there. But if you're trying to bring something out of you uh, and turn it into a song, to me, what that's all about, and it applies to probably painting and writing words and whatnot, is a sort of a tap into your, into your subconscious. And I think there's a whole life going on beneath the surface that we get little hints of. We get it from dreams and from coincidences and, and all kinds of places. You just have mm -hmm. to be listening mm -hmm. all the time, which is a hard thing to do if you have a busy life and, and you know, have to be respond to the normal things in our culture but so that's my only advice is to be you know always carry a book with you always be ready to jot down a little gem because you will forget it mm -hmm. um and and keep it all together in one place and and work the craft the other thing is do it every day mm -hmm. i do i i play every day mm -hmm. and i try to write every day um and you'll there's a great book have you seen this book um songwriters on songwriting it's about that thick. <laughs> and it has mm -hmm. interviews with the full expanse of songwriters from, you know, uh, Irving Berlin, I think, might be in there, to Bob Dylan, Paul Simon, uh, all these j jazz folk genres, show, uh, you know, show, show tunes, that kind of thing. And um, there's a surprising amount of commonality between what they say. First of all, none of them get how it works. It's all a mystery. They don't really know how they do what they do, which is, I think is fascinating. And, and then a lot of the discipline and the habits that they recommend are all on the lines of, you know, do it every day, you know, make sure you're ready to capture an idea, musical or, or lyrical or whatever. And so, uh, hey, it works for these guys. <laughs> <laughs> that must be the way to go, right? <laughs> I found that it was better for me if I wrote things down. For a while, I was, I had a little recorder. micro cassette recorder yeah. in the glove compartment of my car so that I could just record something if right. something came to mind. But I found that I never went back and listened to these yeah. ideas that I had, yeah. musical yeah. ideas. Yeah. Um, but if I had written it down, I was more sure. likely to get back to yeah. it. You know. yeah. But anyway, before you close out with a couple more songs, I want to make sure people know how they can find you and your music. Well, I can barely online. find me, but um, <laughs> if you want to, uh, there's some um, uh, free downloads, or at least streaming is free, for a bunch of these songs on my website, which is www.frankshagru.com. Um, you can also search for my name, and my name, by the way, S-U-G-R-U-E is the last name. Um, search for my name on Facebook. Uh, I've got a, a few uh, YouTube videos out there. You can search for me there. Mm -hmm. uh, live performances and things like that. I did actually did a video of uh, Counting My Blessings. Uh -huh. uh, that's kind of interesting. And, um, and of course, you can, <laughs> you can download and pay for downloads as well. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm still on iTunes. Okay. Or is yeah. it? All right. Well, why don't you close out with right. a couple more? Great. Thanks. So now that we've dated my history with 1986, <clears throat> I can say that I'm a card-carrying boomer. And this is a song that is actually quite serious for me, but I sometimes facetiously subtitle it Boomer's Lament. It's called Those Days Are Gone. <laughs> Mother's busy with the cleanup. Did you see the way the family loves to eat up my famous casserole? Jimmy, be a deer, and after dinner, will you ride your bike to Mrs. Skinner's and return her bowl? From the lazy boy, dad drops his shoes. Nurse a whiskey and sail and light. 
While Cronkite delivers the news That's the way it is Good night Well those days are gone Keep them behind you They only remind you The world's moving on Put your wheels on the track There's no going back Those days are gone Father likes to take his drives on Sunday Says it is the one day He collects his thoughts In five more years I'll have a pension And on Tuesday I heard Rogers mention A, a VP spot Pull in and fill up the tank Hey buddy, check under the hood Give God in Washington thanks for all that is good. But those days are gone. Keep them behind you, they'll only remind you the world's just moved on. Put your wheels on the track, there's no going back. You love the way in all the old movies They show time passing by The calendar pages, they fly off the wall Watch them flutter, watch them fall Watch them fall I'm sitting by an open window I can feel the way the wind blows Right across these streams and a face of sunshine finds its way into my mind It's a wondrous thing When words seem to fall from the sky Some kind of magic's begun Right before my eyes the song is done I better not end on that tune. That's kind of a downer, huh? So let me close out here. Thank you, Mary, for having me. I'm going to, this is a little song called There's a Little Place. Oh, Barbara was the blushing bride, innocent and teary-eyed, leaning lovely next to her man. Andrew with a look of pride, tall and handsome by her side, smiling into the candle lens. But the years go by, they stumble and fall. One day she finds Andy is gone. If she hadn't been so much to him, she could begin leading a life on her own. There's a little place down next to your heart Where you go to be your own best friend Don't give it away, you're gonna need it someday You never know when you'll be alone again All the years down at the bank Danny rose up through the ranks A wonder child and the company man used to say it's midnight oil, elbow grease and sweat and toil, well, that's what's made me what I am. Then times got hard and they had to let him go, with a pink slip and a handshake goodbye. If he hadn't given all he'd had, he wouldn't be so lost and sad, 
be some meaning in this life There's a little place down next to your heart Where you go to be your own best friend Don't give it away, you're gonna need it someday You never know when you'll be alone again His health began to go. Deb said, Dad, I think you know it's best if you move in here with me. She didn't mind his endless spears, washing his clothes, cooking his meals, taking care of all his needs. But now he's gone and the house seems so cold. She's wondering how to find her own way. If she hadn't given quite so much Maybe now she could touch The joy she buried with him in his grave There's a little place Down next to your heart Where you go to be your own best friend Don't give it away You're gonna need it someday You never know when you'll be alone again Don't let it go, cause you never know when you'll be alone again. Thanks so much.